Hello everyone, welcome back to Salar Khan YouTube channel where we've been discussing for the previous two videos the hydrothermal coordination. So in the first video we saw a little introduction, a general talk about it. In the next video we saw examples, two examples that were based uh, on that but that were without losses. Today in this video let's see we see two more examples but we include losses right yes so if the losses are included so the coordination equation would then be written as this mu uh, dq with respect to dph for the hydro this would be equal to df with respect to dpt for the thermal and this time this would not be equal to lambda directly this would be equal to lambda into 1 minus dpl upon dp and dp would be either h or t whatever it is with respect to whatever it is given and pl is the power loss right yes so let's say an example example is what a three plant hydrothermal system has the following assumed characteristics plant number one is a thermal power plant having an input function f1 and this is equal to 47.84 47.84 plus uh, 9.5 p1 plus 0 0.01 p1 squared then you have the second one is also a thermal unit and this is given by 50.01 plus 9.94 p2 plus 0 0.01 p2 squared and then the final, the third one, the discharge of the hydro is given by Q3, which is equal to 0 0.5087 plus 0 0.101 P3 plus 1 into 10 to the power negative 4 P3 whole squared. If units are not given, so consider it in the standard units. That is the F would be in megabit use per hour and the discharge would be in million cubic feet per hour. The loss formula is given by, the loss formula is given by what PL is equal to power loss. This is depending on the three of them 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 4 P1 plus P1 squared plus 1.2 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 squared and then plus 2.2 into 10 to the power negative 4 p3 squared the optimal schedule is given by the optimal schedule is also given that p1 is 100.29 megawatts p2 is 85.21 megawatts and p3 is 68.0 megawatts so now let me tell you whatever values you are given you do not need to do any rounding off over here you do not need to do any assumptions over here for instance 100.29 don't round it off to 100.3 85.21 don't round it out to 85 or 85.2 your calculated values do the rounding off you do whatever you want to do but when you are given the values a set of values don't play with it take it as it is next calculate the volume of the water available over the 24 hour period of time the volume is unknown the system incremental cost of the power so which means lambda and uh, power delivered the total system losses which means pl and then what do you have the system power demand pd and the water conversion coefficient so these all things are unknown right yes so first of all if i talk about the power loss so power loss you can directly calculate by this formula why because each and everything is given so you have what you have 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 4 multiplied with p1 squared so 100.29 whole squared then you have plus you have 1.2 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 squared so 85.21 whole squared and then plus finally for the third is 2.2 into 10 to the power negative 4 p3 squared which is 68 squared and this is the formula this is it so from here what do you have you've got your power loss and what would that be so power loss uh, 
पावर लॉस पावर लॉस पावर लॉस इज 3.5 मेगावाट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस फॉर्मूला 3.5 मेगावाट्स सो यू हैव गॉट व्हाट यू हैव गॉट योर पावर लॉस फाइन यस नाउ व्हाट कैन यू डू इज यू नीड टू टेक द डेरिवेटिव्स यू नीड टू टेक द डेरिवेटिव्स सो df1 with respect to dp1 similarly df2 with respect to dp2 and then finally d uh, q3 with respect to dp3 so what we did we please write it over here 9.5 9.94 0.101 plus 2 multiply 0.01 would be 0.02 p1 0.02 p1 then you have 0.02 p2 and and over here what do you have this would be equal to 0. Uh, 101 plus 2 into 10 to the power negative 4 p3 fine yes now the losses are uh, there with all of them so you have to do them what by this formula you have to take it equal to lambda into 1 minus power d power loss over d p1 Similarly, over here you take it equal to lambda one minus d power loss with respect to p two. Similarly, over here take it to lambda one minus d power loss with respect to d p three. So, do I need to write them directly? Can I write them directly? I can. So have a look. I would write over here lambda into. 1 minus d p l d p 1 would be what? So 2 multiply 1.6 would become 3.2 into 10 to the power negative 4, and p 1 is already given, uh, which would be what? Which would be 100.29, which would be 100.29. So have a look. This equation comes in terms of p 1. 9.5 plus 0.02 p1 is equal to lambda 1 minus 3. Point this so p1 put p1 equal to 100.29 over here as well and from here you can find out the value of lambda. So from here the value of lambda comes out to be uh, 11.98. 11.98 is the rate per megawatt hour. So you have got your lambda as well. Fine. Yes. Similarly, then you need the volume. You need the volume over here. So for volume, what do you need to do? You need to multiply the discharge with time. So volume is basically the discharge multiplied with time. So the discharge would come out to be 0.5087 plus 0.101 p3. P3 is given, which is 68. And then you have what plus one uh, into ten to the power negative four p three squared, so sixty eight whole squared, and multiply it with the time. So this is for the discharge, and then the time is for the twenty four hours duration. So this implies what that the volume for the twenty four hours duration would come out to be. Would come out to be what? One eighty eight point one three. One eighty eight. 0.13 million cubic feet. So volume is also done. Now what do you have? You have the power demand unknown. So have a look. I told you when you talk about the 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 lossy system. So there you don't talk about the power requirement directly. So the power generated by each unit, that is P1 plus P2 plus P3, this is not only necessary to meet the demand, but it also has to cater for the losses. So this would be equal to PD plus PL, which is basically the power requirement. So have a look. You've got P1, you've got P2, you've got P3. You need PD. You have PL as well. So the power demand is what? P1 plus P2 plus P3. Do whatever it is. 100.29 plus 85.21 plus 68.0, and then minus the power loss, which is 3.5. So have a look. What do you have? Is you've got your power demand as well. And what is power demand? What is power demand? It is a 250 megawatts. 250 megawatts. Power demand is done. Mu, the water conversion coefficient. So V D Q D P H would be equal to what? So, so for mu, what do you do? I will do it over here. Let's say I do it over here. So mu 
times dq dp so dq dp is over here 0.01 or 0 0.101 plus 2 into 10 to the power negative 3 times p3 and p3 is 68 right and this is equal to lambda so lambda you have calculated lambda lambda is what where is lambda 11.98 11.98 and multiplied with what 1 minus dpl with respect to dp3 so dpl with respect to dp3 is what 1 minus 4.4 this dpl with respect to dp3 would be what i will write over here let's say over here dpl with respect to dp3 would be these are basically the partial derivatives in terms of power loss okay so this is constant this is constant over here 4.4 into 10 to the power negative 4 p3 so this would be over here 4.4 into 10 to the power negative 3 p3 is 68 can do the calculations this implies what you've got your water conversion coefficient which is what 101.4 101.4 and that is it about it that is it about this question right yes so do check the calculations i don't think i've said it previously in the next video in the previous video i believe i told you but you need to do check the calculations by yourself each and every calculation okay yes so this was example number one let's say example number two is what a two plant hydrothermal system has the following characteristics so we've got two plants now We've got two plants now. So the first is a thermal power plant which is given by F1 let's say is 2.7 P1 plus 0 0.003 P1 squared. 0 0.003 P1 squared. And then you have what the discharge for the hydro is given by the relation Q2. So Q2 is what? It's 2380 plus 2380 plus 60 P2. And this is in cubic feet per second. So the thing is that you have to convert your cubic feet per second to what? To million cubic feet per hour. And how do you do this? So for that you need to get, uh, you, you, you have a look. You have to introduce a million uh, in the numerator, so in the denominator as well. So I would have a 10 to the power minus six. And then you have to introduce a per hour in the denominator. So multiply an hour in the numerator also. So multiply this with this factor to get a Q2 in, in the million cubic feet per hour and that is what that is 8.56 plus 8.56 plus 0.216 P2 0.216 P2 and this is in million cubic feet per hour this is already in mega BTUs per hour fine yes next what they're talking about is uh, uh, so have a look you do not need to confuse it over here next is what where here the transmission losses are given by the power loss is given by what power loss is only associated with the with the second one that is with the hydro so you have a 1.43 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 squared this is the power loss equation then you have what the following table gives the system power demand in this so duration is given the first is a 14 hours duration the next is a 10 hours duration the demand is given power demand in megawatts is given so for the first 14 hours it's 700 and for the next 10 hours it's 450 and then the incremental cost lambda is given for the first case is 3.911 and for the next case is 3.627 now what you need to do is it is required to calculate the optimal active power generated by each of the plants in each sub intervals so p1 is unknown p2 is unknown each of the plants right the system power losses pl is unknown the water conversion coefficient mu and the available volume of water 
the available volume of water so these are the things are known in each interval of time so let's say the first interval i will call interval one and then or let's say interval a and then for the second one i'll call interval b so one of them i will do the second one you will do let's say i do the first interval a so in interval a the power demand is given and the value of the lambda is given so whatever be the intervals the derivatives would have to remain the same so which means that if i if i do what if i do df1 with respect to dp1 so that would be uh, 2.7 plus 0.006 i will i will just copy it from here yes 0.006 p1 0.006 p1 right similarly d uh, dq2 with respect to dp2 so this would come out to be what this would come out to be this thing uh, 0.216 only 0.216 yes yes similarly you have dpl with respect to dp2 so the power loss dpl with respect to dp2 would be what it would be 2.86 2.86 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 so in both the intervals these things would be the same right yes now what do you have is now have a look let's go stepwise so first of all the losses are only associated with the hydro the first one is the thermal so the losses are not associated so i can just directly put it equal to lambda yes yes and the value of lambda is given which is 3.911 so which means that from here i've got the value of lambda right yes so the lambda value can be calculated from here which is 3.911 no 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 the p1 value i've got the value of p1 so p1 value would be 3.911 minus 2.7 divided by 0 0.006 and p1 comes out to be how much 201.83 megawatts 201.83 megawatts is the p1 so i've got p1 have a look right yes now what do i have now what can i do is the next if i talk about the power demand in this case so power 1 p1 plus p2 in this case would be equal to the power demand pd plus the power loss pl right yes so basically i've got p1 and p2 but what do i need to do over here what do I need to do over here? I can put uh, power demand I have basically. I have the power demand, right? Yes. So P1 I have already calculated. So have a look. From this equation I can say 201.83 plus P2 is what? P2 is unknown. Uh, and this would be equal to power demand which is 700 plus the power loss which is this one 2.86 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 and this would be a square to it do i have a square to it well we don't have a square to it no no you have to put the power loss directly you have to put the power loss directly not the derivative of power loss so this one 1.43 into 10 to the negative 4 p2 squared so have a look you've got a quadratic equation only in terms of p2 so which means you can solve them for yourself can you not solve that for yourself you can so the p2 comes out to be what i will just write it directly from here p2 is 539.84 539.84 megawatt so you have your p2 as well can you not calculate your power lost from here you can you can calculate from here power loss or you can put it in this equation as well you can put it in this equation that would be 1.43 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 which is 539.84 whole squared or you can also calculate it from there that this would be p1 plus p2 201.83 plus uh, uh where is it wait i have a mistake somewhere i believe no 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 this is not a yes this is p2 i thought if this is an l so this is 539.84 and then minus p1 plus p2 minus the power demand which is 700 so these two would give you the same result that power loss would come equal to what power loss is 41.67 megawatts 41.67 megawatts power loss is done
water conversion coefficient so you have what mu times dq with respect to dp so dq is what q2 with respect to dp2 this would be equal to lambda 1 minus dp dpl with respect to dp2 right yes so just put down the values put down the values mu times dq2 with respect to dp2 where is it here it is 0 0.2 216 and this is equal to lambda is given 3.911 into 1 minus 1 minus what 1 minus what dpl with respect to dp2 this thing 2.86 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 and the value of p2 is 539.84 can you not do the calculations by yourself you can this implies that mu comes out to be what mu comes out to be where is it 15.43 15.43 mu is done volume required so the volume in this duration the volume in this duration volume is q multiply time right so for this duration the discharge is this one so you will have an 8.56 plus 0.216 multiplied with p2 which is 539.84 so this will give you the discharge over here and multiplied with the number of hours are 14 so this gives you the volume that is being utilized in this particular interval which is 1752.31 1752.31 million cubic feet so the volume is also done is that fine it is now now you have what now you have interval number b where the power demand now has reduced to 450 and the incremental cost has also reduced to 3.267 so what can you do again put df1 dp1 equal to lambda directly so from here you can find out p1 have a look i will write over here p1 would be what would be equal to 3.627 minus 2.7 divided by 0 0.006 from here you've got your p1 in megawatts then what do you have p1 plus p2 is pd plus pl so you've got this thing from here put down this one p1 you have let's say whatever it is plus p2 so p1 plus p2 is equal to power demand is now 450 plus PL, write it in terms of P2 again, 1.43 into 10 to the power negative 4 P2 whole squared. Again, you've got a quadratic equation. From here, you can calculate the value of P2. If you've got the value of P2, put it in the power loss equation. You will have your power loss again. Have a look. P1, P2, power loss is done. Again, for what? For, for the conversion coefficient DQ with respect to DP2 is equal to lambda into 1 minus so uh, dp with respect to dp dpl with respect which means what mu into 0 0.216 this would be equal to lambda is what lambda is 3.627 over here into 1 minus dpl with respect to dp2 would be what so 1 minus 2.86 into 10 to the power negative 4 and the value of p2 that you have calculated put this over here you will get your value of mu as well the water conversion coefficient for volume what do you need to do do i have space over here is it visible oh yes i believe i have the last line so i can just write it over here so the volume i will write over here let's say this is volume 2 for instance this was volume 1 over here so for volume 2 now i will have the discharge into time again so the discharge equation is given 8.56 plus 0.216 into p2 put the value of p2 and this would give you the discharge in this interval of time and multiply it with the number of hours that are what that are 10 in this case this would give you the total volume for this interval of time the volume for the whole day volume for whole day would be what would be volume 1 plus volume 2 and you can also write the total volume and this is it so this is it now I'm not doing the calculations over here because then the video gets longer and then it gets boring so I don't like it that way. And 
this could be your homework as well you have to do something by yourself also do check out my calculations as well and these that i've written with the black is your homework the answers i need them in the comment section i need the answers in the comment section i will see you in the next video very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember many prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye